So, Adam, why yes. did the Tenth Doctor get evicted from the TARDIS? Why? It wanted a new tenant. Oh. <laughs> Planet of the Pudding Brains. There's no point in being grown up if you can't be childish sometimes. Do you like a jelly baby? Shut up! Hello and welcome, Whovians, to a brand new episode of Musings of a Pudding Brain. I'm Adam. And I'm Matt. And this week, we're catch- We're still catching you up on we the are, series. We're, we're still catching the uh, the noob Whovian, the new Whovian, however you want to go Nuvian. for it. The Nuvian. Um, up on season nine, the Peter Capaldi years. Yes. And we are up to... Uh, episode three, Under the Lake, which is the beginning of a two-parter. Yeah, we're going to be hitting Under the Lake and Before the Flood. Uh, we still have Capaldi as the Doctor. Jenna Coleman still is Clara Oswald. And there's a special guest appearance. And yes, in, uh, was it Before the Flood, the second yeah. part, for a special little Easter egg for metalheads out there. We'll come to that uh, special cameo, as it were, yeah. when we come to that. But the these two episodes are littered with all kinds of people that you know. Most notable for me, uh, because I am a huge Game of Thrones fan. Uh, Paul K shows up. He plays Thoros of Mir, um, the the Red Priest. For any of the GOT <laughs> fans out there, is like, oh yeah, him. Um, and also, there's Colin McFarlane, who you may recognize as Commissioner Loeb from. Uh, Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. Okay. He, he's it's just he's in there for a little while. He, he's the guy who runs afoul of the Joker and drinks the acid. Yes. So, but, and there there's there's a bunch of other people that show up, but those were the two most notable for me. Oh, that's awesome. Um, just in this one. Those are Easter eggs that I didn't even catch. It was totally watching the episodes going, they look familiar, and, and Paul Kay was a little harder to spot because he plays uh, Prentice, the first ghost we run into in this Scooby-Doo episode. Oh, yeah. Um, it, this it, entire, it, Both episodes are filled with ghosts. Yes, you almost <laughs> want somebody to yell jinkies at one point. I was hoping. Uh, yeah, co- copyrights and all that. They probably couldn't get away with it, but something maybe, like, some sort of reference but you know maybe a band playing some cheesy chase music in the background elevator music basically right so the episode of under the lake opens up and we have i, I believe it was I, it's obviously in the future i can't remember the date but we have uh, it's the it's scotland in the 22nd century 22nd century we have an alien spacecraft found under a lake right that they have brought it into this research lab, which how they managed that being an underwater lab, getting a I, whole shuttle in. I don't know. I'm the doctor. Accept it. We yeah. discussed this last podcast. <laughs> and they get it in there and there's some creepy cryptic alien writing on the inside. And the moment a group of them read it, a ghost appears. Yes. And immediately starts to attack one of the crew members, igniting the engine, killing... Uh, poor, poor Colin, who we mentioned earlier. He's not yeah. in the episode long as a speaking role. Yeah. D- did you know that, that it... I had a problem with that. Why'd the black guy have to die right away? Because he made a noble sacrifice and pushed a crew member out of the way. He was the hero. All right, all right. He wa- but he it falls into a... Sacrifice. It is it's a fa- bit of a stereotype and <laughs> horror horror, things. horror movie! <laughs> But but in this case, it was he he yeah. made the sacrifice. He was a good commander and saved one of his crew members. Yes. Um, he immediately comes back as a ghost, a like creepy ghost that have black eye sockets. Yeah. And seem to be mumbling something that nobody can hear. Nope. And which, of course, people freak out. And then we skip to the opening and the doctor and Clara landing on what seems to be a deserted research station and finding their way into the dining hall with a really, really creepy moral mural of this Leviathan sea monster that happens to have four people in a boat getting it's... ready to devour them, destroy them, whatever. Yeah, 
Seems like an odd piece of artwork to put on an underwater <laughs> research station. Yeah, it's a moment where I'm like, who in the art department thought that was a good idea? Right, and in the dining hall. That's what I want to stare at. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, it was just a little, little bit creepy foreshadowing of events to come. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the doctor and Clara, of course, encounter a pair of ghosts who get right up in their grills, but don't attack them. They're not violent to them at all. They just walk away from them. Yeah. Which is, okay, why Why are they... Is it just because he's the doctor? Why are they not attacking them? <clears throat> and they figure out very quickly that the ghosts suddenly become violent after somebody has read the alien words in the shuttle. Ah. Which seems to be some sort of trigger. They didn't become violent or aggressive towards them because... Nobody the, had read it. Nobody had read it. The message had not been imprinted in their minds. Um, so they, of course, decide it might be a good idea to beat feedback to the TARDIS and try and figure some things out, but the TARDIS has a very poor reaction to the ghosts and does not want to be there to the point no. where the Doctor has to throw the handbrake on. <laughs> like, we're not, we're not leaving. Stay. <laughs> Come on. Stay here. So, so the the question is again the the doctor conversing with the TARDIS and we all know it's a semi sentient yeah. life form, but it's still very much a guy talking to his car going, Come on, baby, what's wrong? Why aren't you happy? What <laughs> talk to me. What's going on? And like, oh, God, I've seen this in a garage a million times, dude. <laughs> At least in his case, there is a quasi intelligence going on with the TARDIS. Right. So right. he's not just talking to Christine. <laughs> you know? Um and because of this, they're trying to figure out why, what is causing problems with the TARDIS. Why is there a time slip? What is going on? Yes. And they f also figure out very quickly after meeting the scientists, meeting, you know, meeting the kids in the mystery machine, that one of their crew members has died, and they don't know what the ghosts want. They only come out. During at, at night time, quote during, unquote, during the base's night period, right? Which because it's underwater, they don't have sunlight. They don't have any way to keep track, so it's an automated system, right? Okay, this you should be in bed. We're turning the lights off. Daylight hours, we crank everything up. So is it? You know, it's spooky. The ghosts only come out at night, <laughs> yeah. but it also has something to do with the power draw, right? Like, why is this going on? So the doctor is totally flipping out because they're ghosts he has no explanation for it <laughs> they shouldn't be there once you're dead you're dead is it this exciting and the crew is just like yeah but that was our friend that guy <laughs> our our dead friend is now back as a ghost that wants to hurt people uh, no, we're not cool with this. <laughs> and, and, and Clara hands him the... The cards. The cue cards <laughs> designed for when he's trying to apologize I, or say something that is not just completely cold and heartless. <laughs> I do like... there. If I remember correctly, one of them was a backhanded insult. It was like, I'm sorry that your friend was such an idiot. <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, who wrote those for you? <laughs> I, I have a feeling he wrote a bunch of them out, and then she edited a few of them, or Probably. put some of her, it, of her own in there. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry that your friend pet property has been killed or damaged or destroyed. I will do my best to rectify the situation. Just very deadpan. <laughs> like you're not you're not supposed to read the slash yeah options. <laughs> Just figure out which one fits the best and read that instead. <laughs> You're one of the most intelligent beings in the universe. How are you this socially awkward? <laughs> because he is that because, intelligent. Right. He doesn't. He needed to sacrifice something for the intelligence. <laughs> but did he sacrifice it or just never have it to begin with? This is why I, I have to get into the classic who. Because you know, this I'm, is I'm one not of really my questions. <laughs> the doctor's always had a bit of sass about him. Fair enough. <laughs> and really, that whole, I'm sorry, you're an idiot, qu comes up quite often. <laughs> all right. All right. I See, I accept that then. So it's always just been a, a, a core oh, yeah. part of his personality. 
Like anytime someone's just like, "Oh, I understand what you're talking about." He's like, "No, you don't." But it's nice to know that you that you think you do. <laughs> right now, you, you almost. I just once I want one of the doctors to look at somebody and just pat them on the head and go, "Oh, honey, you're so pretty." <laughs> <laughs> Bless your precious head. <laughs> yeah, aren't, aren't you just a adorable come with me and just <laughs> totally patronizing this is one of my hopes for the new doctor when she comes on the scene because i just it'll be a you are the weakest link go by good yeah, yeah. goodbye <laughs> but again um back, back to the goings on with the mystery van under the under the lake bed the doctor comes to find out that the ghosts are actually transmitters because one of the crew members are is deaf, so she's reading their lips when right. the ghosts are talking. Uh, they find a secure place in a Faraday cage where they can see them but outside, the... but the ghosts can't come in because they are effectively Electronic. radio signals yeah. in a very layman's term kind of way, so they can't come in due to the radio interference. And they find out that they're saying the same words over and over again, the dark, the sword, the forsaken, the temple which the doctor then figures out its coordinates. Right. Star coordinates. And they figure out the dark is space. Uh, the sword is Orion's belt. The Forsaken is this flooded town that is now where the underwater base is located. Right. Then the temple must be in the town somewhere because the coordinates keep shrinking down. Mm, yes. And what is the temple but the church? It's the church. Of course. The where The church they've... is haunted. Yeah. Of course. And I do like how it becomes an earworm. Like, it, you just, once you hear the, the cadence of it, it's all you can hear. Right. You can't think of anything else. It's like hearing a Journey song first thing in the morning. It's mm -hmm. annoying and you can't get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Why Journey? I don't, you, you, personal thing. Okay. I, it's just one of those bands I'm... I, I, respect the artist for what they did but not a fan it will immediately get a channel like, switch and, and switch and channel no <laughs> no i will listen to pop music before this <laughs> right and okay and, and and back to has the doctor always being kind of smarmy and snarky uh, one of my favorite quotes in in this episode is surely being around me makes you clever by osmosis <laughs> the coordinate it, it's just one of those come on people keep up with me <laughs> come on come on just let some of it rub off this is when he figures out i've got a bonus to everyone's stats come on <laughs> right right party bonus alone gives you at least 30 levels up now right. come on work with me here <laughs> this is when he figures out that the the coordinates are leading to the church and specifically to a suspended animation chamber yeah um, which is what was in the shuttle originally, but taken out at some point, and also might have to do something, something to do with the missing power cell that they find earlier. One of the power cells has been removed right. from the shuttle, and they they figure it's wherever this animation chamber is. Um, yeah. Wait, so they, you, you hit a know, moment. Yeah, I hit a moment. I had a brain <laughs> fart there. Sorry. Um, so they end up trying to catch one of the ghosts at one point to trap them. And yep. if for any other reason. So they have free movement on the underwater base because they need to get back to the TARDIS. But the lights are suddenly going into nighttime mode without anybody triggering it. And yes. a kind of Scooby-Doo Aliens 3 moment ensues where there's a lot of running through corridors and shutting doors and oh god did they see me and they figured out that one of the crew members who was not the translator for the deaf scientist wasn't being attacked and it's because he's the only one who didn't read the words so he has now effectively become their scout Yes, because they won't harm him and as they try and get to the TARDIS, they get separated. The Doctor, and O'Donnell, and I believe Lunn get separated from Clara and the remaining scientists. Yeah, Cass and the translator. Yes, Cass and the translator. Thank you. And 
there's another moment where they're separated and the doctor saying, I will come back for you. Yep. And you can kind of read it in Clara's face, both, I want to believe in you, I am scared out of my wits, and then quickly followed by, come on, again? <laughs> yeah. Again! <laughs> Still separated from each other. What is it with you guys? It's just, ugh, oh, fine, just, just do what you have to do and come back. Yeah. <laughs> Turns around to see through the window... Right, she's trying to give Cass this bolstering speech about, yes, we've been through this before, and the doc I have to believe in him, the doctor will figure it out, he's never let me down before, and they look out through the window to find the doctor's ghost. Yeah, just floating out there. Something has changed in the past, and the episode ends with that cliffhanger going, uh, the doctor died. I, well, okay, he's come back from worse. This, something's got to happen. But <laughs> yeah. what, what? It's a, that's a good cliffhanger. It is. It is. And, and again, it's the whole creepy ghost story of, yeah, things have gone wrong. Now, of course, the doctor's involved. Things have gone wrong. For me, I, I said in my notes, one of the biggest things that I loved about this episode was the fact that it felt like a fourth doctor's era episode. Very sci-fi, very running through corridors. You know, there's a, a definite danger going on, and the Doctor and the Companion are separated from one another. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, give me more, give me more. And it, we get to that cliffhanger, and I'm like, okay, definitely a fourth Doctor story. Thank you. And then we get into the... get into Before the Flood. Before the Flood, and the episode opens with the Doctor explaining a bootstrap paradox with... Who actually composed Beethoven's Fifth? Right. Which is an interesting little bit of time travel uh, trivia and, and involving time paradoxes where the... It basically, he, he claims that a time traveler goes back in time to talk to Beethoven because he's such a big fan. And right. He meets Beethoven and Beethoven has no idea what he's talking about has never written a stitch of music in his life <laughs> but the time traveler quote unquote being has. the doctor has all of his favorite compositions and everything to be signed by Beethoven the originals written by Beethoven he has those going to be signed by Beethoven to make them even more famous but Beethoven never wrote them so who writes them so who originally created those notes? Right. Which then ends with the question, who actually composed Beethoven's Fifth? And then straight into the episode where <laughs> the Doctor is now in the past. Yep, it's now 1980, kind of the height of the, uh, one of the heights of the Cold War. Yes, in the town that they found uh, uh, that was actually flooded out or was flooded out is not an actual functioning town. It no. is a military training camp, basically, where it's mocked up to be a small Russian town, complete with communist paraphernalia everywhere oh, to yeah. make sure that everybody knows this town is owned by the Ruskies. <laughs> like, at first, when I when I started seeing all the stuff on the walls, I was like, what? why are... I thought we were in Scotland. What is going on with this episode now? Right, and and why is it Lenin posters? By that time, I would think it was Gorbachev. It would have been Gorbachev. Yeah, but yeah, all all kinds of very much Bolshevik <laughs> posters up everywhere, and like lots of red, lots of red, lots of red, and, and sickles. <laughs> <clears throat> A lot of hammers too. <laughs> A lot of hammers. So. They find the shuttle that is now parked pretty much in the middle of the town, right in front of the church. Mm -hmm. It is still occupied. The The space now has what effectively looks like a body bag yeah. laying in the hold. And as they... The writing is not etched into the shuttle at this point. Nope. And then they have the wits scared out of them by Prentice. <laughs> who is alive and well and apparently belongs to a race that 
has been conquered the most <laughs> in the universe. Yes. They pretty much just live for a new overlord to show up and take it very well. Just like, hey, you know what happens? Whatever. We provide a service. You want to be in charge? You be okay, in charge. Okay, you're in charge. We're fine. You you go about this. Would you <laughs> like to conquer me? <laughs> Surrenders to the doctor, I think, three or four times. It, yes. Just, you, know, you can have this information. You just have to be my overlord. And the oh. doctor's just like, I... Really? All right, fine. <laughs> yes. But tell me what's going on, and we come to find out the body inside the shuttle is actually, it's a hearse. It is a body. Yep. And it is carrying the Fisher King, who is a warlord of the, the last race to conquer princesses. People. people. And he is effectively just the hearse driver. He's, He's just bringing it home. And, That's yeah. it. And... <laughs> it's it's just one of the the characters just so ingratiating you just I, kind of almost want to feel pity for him but you really just, just want him to go away and shut up I, you're like now you start off being like oh man your your people are conquered all the time that's so horrible to hear that and then you're like but you gave up so quickly so you've never been conquered you've just surrendered <laughs> Yes, you, there's no fight given whatsoever. No. Yeah, come right on in. Here, mikase sukase. You know, just whatever. Take what you want, do what just you will. Fight off the other guys. We'll be over here. We'll be over here. We'll wait. What, would you like some tea? Yeah. Uh, and, and we flip back to Clara and Cass and, and the other cat who I can't, I still can't remember his name. I, horrible yeah. host. I'm but, sorry about that. And. They're figuring out, once again, because Cass can read lips, that the Doctor's ghost is not repeating the star coordinates. He's repeating a list of names. Yes. And it's all the names of the crew in a very particular order. Yes. <sighs> and as things go about, they figure out, okay, yes, it's the order of the crew where they have been killed so it's now like a prediction of who's gonna go next right which is always great to have hanging over your head it, it's not fun and uh, again the uh, o'donnell's character or mcdonald excuse me gets is the first one in this episode to get taken out by the fisher king who of course somehow regenerates gets out of the body bag kills prentice scrapes the message into the shuttle. Yeah. All of this going on while the doctor's having it aside with these other two saying we we can't tell them that we figured this out. That's not our job. That'll just cause the rest of them more panic. Yeah. And while the, you know again while their back is turned, the monster wakes up, takes one person out, first ghost is created, scratches and then disappears. Yeah, it was Prentice was the fr very first one. Very right? first one, because he probably just stood there and went, Yes, my lord! And, and you know, immediately was immediately killed. Immediately just killed. <laughs> like, get out of my way. <laughs> Decided it wasn't nice like the doctor who was just like, Yeah, just, you know, stop bothering me. Fisher King's like, Oh, it's you! Go away! Go away. <laughs> At this point, the doctor decides he really needs to get back to talk to Clara. Yes. Especially to figure out what is going on with his ghost and how that happened and the TARDIS goes nope he just he bounces back a no, half hour yeah he goes back in time a half an hour and he tries it a couple of times and it keeps bringing him back to the same point and I was like no yep. no no nope. no we're not doing it I don't want to go anywhere I'm, I'm this is where I am I'm not going anywhere it's like oh come on <laughs> And from there, once again, it's it's very much a Scooby-Doo episode, a horror movie episode, where the crew is taken out by the Fisher King one by one, yep. who you don't really see, but has an unearthly roar to him. And this is where I am so glad I did push a little uh, research into it, because I was curious as to the sound effect. It's one of my <laughs> things. I like to know how they make the creatures roar, and I found out... That the roar is specifically done by one of my personal favorites. Corey Taylor from Slipknot was tapped just to do the monster's roar. Yes. Oh, this touched my little black heart so, so much. Oh, it's, it's awesome. And, and then just kind of laughing and like, wow, 
Would have never figured him for a Doctor Who fan, or if it was just simply some metalhead in the back of the production room going, "Hey, how how about we ask somebody who really knows how to roar?" Okay, how I to do this. Sadly, I didn't I didn't write down the the notes regarding that, but if I remember correctly, it's actually his son who is a big Doctor Who fan. Oh, even better. So, and I think Corey like... grew up with it. If I'm remembering remembering the story correctly. Uh, and when he was approached, he jumped right to it. He's like, yes, yes. <laughs> Whatever okay. you want me to do. I'm part of that show in some way now. My name is in history. In the, yeah, <laughs> I am credited in there. I am part of the Who, Who Nation now. <laughs> yeah, that that just, that, it, it was awesome. So if any metalheads listening, watch this episode specifically for that. And you can know, it's like, yeah, they didn't even auto-tune that. That's just him opening up a show. Yeah, I right mean, on. there is some layering and all that to it, but that's, they barely changed it. Barely. Barely, barely at all. So I had that little geek out moment whilst the running amok was going on, and um, it, it flips back again to Clara and Cass and <sighs> using the translator as bait because they have to get out and, yeah and and i forget what they were trying to retrieve but they were it was again putting somebody else in danger uh for the benefit of the greater good what a constant theme in doctor who as it is and Cass pretty much straight up asks clara has traveling with the doctor changed you or have you always put others lives at risk i know and Cl and clara just blinks for a second and replies he taught me to do what has to be done which again back to the sometimes there are no good choices but you still have to choose right right and, I, I do like how when they come upon the, the the ghosts again they're all whispering to each other <laughs> and okay so quick little joke so the last time Remy and I did this and went through these episodes we nicknamed the ghosts as an as a new version of a boy band. <laughs> so when they're all standing together, I was like, "Oh, they're working on a new track." <laughs> <laughs> Were they called the Ghost Whispers? Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> all right, so <laughs> I didn't think of that name. Damn it! <laughs> this is why you bring the new blood in. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and. Yeah. Well, well, while they're having their, their little moments, uh, back with the doctor decides enough is enough. He's, he's going to face down the Fisher King yeah. to try and head off anybody else dying, becoming a ghost. And there's the great villain monologue the Fisher King gives about, oh, I, you know, we will destroy everything in our path, and my ghosts create other ghosts, and I will bring bring my people here and we will have this world and the doctor pretty much going yeah no, no you're really not going to but nope i'm gonna keep you talking until i figure out what exactly you did and how i can reverse it right which is the doctor's ultimate superpower time travel <laughs> hyper intelligence everything else aside his true ability is to get the villain to spill their guts and to use their power, their plans directly against them. Which is basically what he ends up doing to the Fisher King. Yeah. As we come to find out, he has, knowing he's going to face him, and knowing that the town has to be flooded, he plants the power cell at the dam. <laughs> and, but um bump Scooby-Doo's the Fisher King into thinking he's going to make it out of live steals his stasis pod. Yeah. And then spends all of that time, again, trapped in stasis. Something the doctor does quite a little bit of. I mean, it's easy. You just fall asleep for 200 years. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just, I'm going to take a nap. Steals the stasis pod, kills the Fisher King, and mm -hmm. find uh, pops up, and the, the ghosts basically dissipate because now there's nothing remaining for them to broadcast the control is gone yes and, you know he pops up scares the crap out of clara and cass <laughs> and, and the other surviving members of the crew who he sent back in the tardis whenever he went to face the fisher king 
And all the band is back together, basically. <laughs> Pretty much. And, and it's like, oh, you know, he would have gotten away with it if it weren't for that rotten doctor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they're asking, well, well, but what about your ghost? You died. Oh, no, it was a hologram. Yeah. yeah it was a hologram. Like, ah, you know, again. Just, again, dude, fill other people in on your plan sometimes. But I love the fact that he's, as he says at the end of the episode, the only reason that he had the idea to do that was because Clara told him he had already done it. Right. <laughs> So in the, which there's a bootstrap, us, cu- <laughs> which brings us back to who wrote Beethoven's Fifth. It's a bootstrap <laughs> pa- paradox because he hadn't thought about it until she told him he thought about it. Yeah, I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> and why isn't there more th- more of this going on with the doctor where he shows up someplace and they're like, "Thank you for saving us," and he's like, "I haven't done anything yet," and then slowly finds out what it is that he has already done spoilers so that he can go back and do it (laughs) right (laughs) it's just like oh please stop talking to me the more that i know that i'm doing this i have to go and do it stop it (laughs) right and and i do have to correct myself the ghost they actually end up trapping the remaining ghosts in the fairy day cage right because they use Corey taylor's roar to force (laughs) them into the pit basically and then somehow detach the Faraday cage and tow it off into space where don't, the ghost will dissipate. And it's, again, just... Don't he's, question. He's the doctor accepted that he figured out how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's best if not asking questions. Right. It's, it, because he probably has an answer for you. And it's very much in line with the... <sighs> Listen. <laughs> Pudding brain. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about you being an idiot, but... Do what you're told. Get in the TARDIS. Yeah. There's a plan here. There is a plan. Just roll with it. <laughs> now, that brings us to the end of that two-parter. Which is all kinds of... It was awesome. It was. It was, it was just kind of a fun romp. It didn't give us much more of an overall arc of the season so much as just again showing us how far Clara has been pushed into becoming kind of a doctor when the doctor is away yes and And also seeing the risks that Clara is now willing to take since Danny since Danny's death right and not only with her own life but with your life as well faithful follower yeah it's you're in this pony up play the game because this is the only choices we have. Yeah. They suck. Trust the doctor. And be prepared to change your drawers by the time this is all over. Yeah, you're, you're, this is not going to be fun for anyone. Anyone at all. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, by the end of that episode, we, we, it's, as a viewer, you almost need a palate cleanser. Yes. Which they bring, again... Game of Thrones actress Mazzy Williams. Yes. Into the episode The Girl Who Died. You know, I've always pronounced her name as Macy. Or Macy. I, I apologize. It's, it's I like Mazzy Star, so I always read it that way. So but anyways, okay. yes, Ma- Macy Williams. <laughs> L- little little Stark. Yes. As it were. Little badass Stark. Absolutely love her in Game of Thrones, and she's done some other movies as well. She's going to be in the upcoming New Mutants film. Excellent. Yes, as Rain, the little werewolf girl. Oh, perfect. Who's Scottish. <laughs> Even more perfect. I know. So, needless to say, when I saw it and saw the character list on IMDb about this, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Even better. Even, even better. It also leads me to believe that the BBC is much like... Um, Canadian sci-fi. The casting yeah. is very incestuous, and everyone oh. was like, "No, I just want to. I want to work with them because yeah. I know them. They're cool, and they're big geeky people too. So they'll want to be they'll, involved in this. They'll want to work over here. Yeah, this this will be great. Let's see if we can get them. That'll yeah. be awesome. So, <laughs> so the girl who died opens up with the TARDIS shows up in a Viking village. Well, I'm I like the cold open in this as well. With Clara just floating in space. Something's in her suit. 
and the doctor's being attacked by a battle fleet in battle fleet while he's in the TARDIS someplace else. <laughs> right. You're like I, I, I'm being attacked by like four different elements right now. Just hold something. on, hold on. I'll be right there. <laughs> I'll be right there. It's something in your. It, it's moving up my suit. I can feel. Oh, it's probably just like a love spider or something. Don't worry about it. Yeah, don't. You're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Gets her in the TARDIS, immediately rips the helmet off, and then squishes the unseen offending arachnid. Ooh, that is a big, hard squish, too. And, yeah, and to the point where he's trying to scrape his shoe off on the TARDIS grates, and I'm like, like oh. I'll, just, I'll, I'll be over here, so how's things? <laughs> yeah, it's just... Uh. <coughs> That was awesome. One of the has absolutely nothing to do with what has happened, what's going on. It's just another moment in their relationship. You're like, that's a story that I that I'm gonna hear some other time, either <laughs> written in a book or as one of the audio dramas from Big Finish. You're gonna hear about that story someday, right? <laughs> how, how how the love spider got into Clara's suit. <laughs> Actually, that is a story I'd like to hear. But anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they end up in this Viking village and immediately become suspect by the locals. Do you, do you blame them? No, not, <laughs> not at all. They, they show up out of nowhere in a little blue box. Yeah. And the doctor immediately starts claiming to be a god he is odin yep they're like they're like no. nope no you're not we've we've met odin he's like wait what what huh? <laughs> what, what what do you mean <laughs> at, at which point the sky opens up and odin's face is live on cloud vision <laughs> yes <laughs> broadcasting to the locals that your your best are coming to valhalla this day roar and prepare for battle basically you know and then sends down six basically small tanks they're they right. look like ar armored automatons who just start to lay waste to everybody who draws a sword yeah and but yeah. They, they don't actually kill them they just sort of dematerialize them yes so like yeah it takes the the ship takes the, yeah the town's warriors mm -hmm. um where some what the lead warrior is the one pulled from the group right well they they also end up grabbing clara and a shielder yes who is uh miss williams character yeah and they very quickly figure out that they are on a spaceship of some kind they're in a big metal box and the first guy who sees the door is like, no, come on, let's go. It's the halls of Valhalla. <laughs> we'll go this way towards the door and is immediately zapped by unknown particle ray that dematerializes him oh, permanently yeah. this time. Yeah. And there's the not much left of him. No, just his clothes and uh, equipment drop every. Everything else is everything gone. Everything else is just gone. At which point the rest of the Vikings start backpedaling, going, oh, maybe we'll just hang out here for a second. <laughs> and then, of course, the wall starts pushing them towards the beams, the sensors, uh, cider press style. Yes. At which point Clara and Macy, or uh, Clara and her shielder, excuse me, go charging in front of all the beams before they can trigger and managed to basically get out the door with everybody else being totally vaporized oh yeah that was a culling right that, that was that was pretty hard to like randomly hard to watch right it was it was very it was like oh that's a lot of people gonna die yeah in this episode okay death trap style all right um, Okay, that's that's rough. It's hard to be an NPC in the in the Hoovian universe. <laughs> yes, Things it is. Usually don't go well. <laughs> and and of course, once they get out the door, the only two survivors, they are immediately confronted by Odin, who I thought was a little short. Yeah, I just wanted to be. Aren't, aren't, aren't you a little short for a stormtrooper, there, pal? Pretty much. <laughs> you, Pretty much. You're a god. What happened? Yeah. You're as tall as Clara is, and that includes the wings on top of your head there, Cyclops. I know. <clears throat> and and what's with the uh, the battle the bodyguards here? Not very Viking needing bodyguards. 
yeah, I do like how they, they straight up confront him and find out that what he's doing is actually taking testosterone from the um uh, from the warriors. From the warriors. I was like, <laughs> all right. Which is why the ladies made it past all the censors. Because exactly. Their testosterone levels were not high enough. <laughs> Which is kind of funny because anybody who's watched this knows that Clara's balls are pretty big. Yeah, they, they are. <laughs> she carries them well. Anybody she, who hangs with the doctor as long as she has and put up with as much of his crap. She is beyond cantaloupes. These are bowling balls now. Absolutely. I don't. I. I'm surprised she's not bow-legged from having to carry them around. Right, and and we find out very quickly that a shielder's balls are just as big because after finding out that he, this is not Odin. This is a group of intergalactic mercenaries. Yes, who are just culling her people. She immediately declares war on them. Yep. <laughs> With Clara going, wait, what? Wait, wait, hold on. <laughs> that escalated quickly. Are we sure we really want to do shielders, this? A shielder's over there being like, we ride or die, both of us, my crew all over here. The crew's going, dude, dude, Tom, maybe not? I, yeah, don't, I, don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> Give, yeah, they're, they're behind them giving the, the hand cuts. Uh, like, dude, chill, 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 chill. God, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> the the Merc group, the Meyer, immediately accept. Like, okay, Sure. You have nobody that can fight us, but we're, we're, we accept your challenge. Ten of yours versus ten of ours. Yes. And okay. And then teleport Clara and a shielder back to the village. Uh. When reality sets in. And now all we have is farmers and fishermen and absolutely no and actual warriors. Because, grandma. <laughs> yeah, because all of the good warriors are now testosterone juice in Odin's belly. Yeah. <sighs> it Which... was, uh, it, that that was a little, that was, I mean, it was a great moment where you go, all right, so Wolverines, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And it's like, and Anybody who grew up in the 80s immediately cringes a little bit and goes, oh, we're about to have a training montage, aren't we? Training montage. <laughs> montage! <laughs> because the doctor figures out that he's got to train I mean, the villagers to fight. He does try to convince them to leave as well. Well, of, of course, but <laughs> the, the doctor knowing that he's not going to be able to turn these stubborn people I, He's like, all, their all path. right, fine, we're going we're gonna to defend this. We're going to fight back. Okay, let's do this. Uh, yeah. I do like the reference to the 2,000-year diary. It's a, That's actually a reference to the second Doctor, who had a, I believe it was a 200-year or 500-year diary. Awesome. Showing how old he was. <laughs> now this one's like, it's even bigger! <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Um, uh. it, needless to say, the training does not go well. No, no, no. <laughs> he, the doctor refuses to give anybody blades, actual blades. He gives them all training yeah. swords to start off it's, with. It's and, him and Clara, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, the, and, and he gets to the point where it's, okay, you haven't completely destroyed yourselves. You've learned a little bit. Let's hand out the real swords. <laughs> and it cuts from them picking up the real swords to immediately... The village is on fire. One guy's knocked on the ground. The doctor is tending to his wounds. Yeah. <laughs> People are running around bucket brigade style. Like, what happened? What? Holy. Well, you swung That escalated wide quickly. And nicked this guy who then, because he started bleeding, you passed out and... <laughs> bumped into the blacksmith who set that on fire and <laughs> we didn't even get to get it, into any of the training nothing it, happened it's this been is, two minutes it's been two minutes and the village is already like half destroyed uh, no i, I do like so not gonna work <laughs> just to roll back for a quick second the conversation between the doctor and the baby uh, yes then of course the fact that the doctor speaks baby S Still speaks baby. TARDIS will translate for him. Yep. <laughs> and, yeah, one of those, even if he's lying right now yeah. about what the baby is saying about, you know, mother, I'm frightened, turn your face to me, you're so beautiful, why is everybody running around, mother, I'm frightened. It's just heart-wrenching. I know. 
it, it, it's you almost want to call him on him be like you don't speak baby but he does speak baby oh uh, but they don't know that i know He's just a strange magician who popped out of a box claiming to be a god who they found out was not a was god. Was not the god. So but still admits a... to be a weird stranger from the future. Right. So they're, they're having bad philosophical day as it is. <laughs> you would think somebody might be like, I don't buy it. <laughs> Someone. But no, it just delivers a heart-rending speech. And yeah. which comes into play later, and he... The baby mentions something about the fire in the water, and everybody's like, "Well, you're a baby. You don't know what." What the hell is fire is in the water? Come to on! Mean? And how is this going to work? And it actually comes into play as the doctor is having a. I honestly have no idea what we're going to do. Yeah, you saw how this training went. Everybody's gonna die. Yes, everybody's gonna die. Wait, you're a fishing village fire and oh my god fire in the water and he has the revelation and of course just because he just had it he still has to act like everybody else who hasn't figured it out is a complete moron it's like <laughs> come on no come on get it it's a fishing village do you have eels yeah like they run out there because it's actually the baby's father he's like yeah i've got buckets of them yeah and they turn out to be electric eels the fire in the water how the baby would see that exactly like okay so now we have a fighting chance because the doctor has a plan and believes he can win which is the ultimate like you're done just give up now because i've he's got gonna, a plan he's gonna get you because <laughs> he now has the confidence and the self-expectation of I'm, I'm, I'm going to win because I'm smarter than you. And we get another montage. And we get another montage. There's a lot of montages in this episode. Uh, there is. Well, they've they they've got to carry the storyline rather uh, quickly. And that's true. Seal up a few things because they only had like five days before the mirror came or not. Or so many days. They had a limited amount of time to come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. And when the fatal day final day comes the mirror show i'm like all right let's get ready to why are you all dancing yeah <laughs> they're having a party throwing rings and dancing and they're like yeah no wait, this is how we're gonna fight this is the way we, we know we know we can't beat you so this is how we're gonna go out yeah so you know i, I so wanted the doctor to challenge them to a dance off just come on, <laughs> come on dance off dance off do bro it. do come it on. for me axe fight something <laughs> <laughs> But no, and as, as the Meyer are distracted and like, no, t t stop this, stop this silliness, fight us. We'll be They've got guys throwing rings around and hooking some metal rings around yep. the antenna, and the shock troopers aren't doing anything. They're just because they're not it. weapons. Because they're not weapons, and then after. Odin, quote unquote, decides, okay, I've had enough of this. Just open fire. That's when the doctor gives the signal. Eels are agitated in in the tanks, mm -hmm. cause an electric shock and totally that totally short circuit. The mere shock troopers that did not notice that the rings that were tossed around them were connected to wire coppering, which is now running electrical current from the eels, zapping them all. The eels don't have that much power. It's the doctor accepted. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just going to be the go-to. It's the doctor accepted, and there's a lot of eels in that one barrel. True, true. No, there is a, a great, uh, once again, third doctor Easter egg in this one at... at at this moment is around this time as well where the doctor reverses the the uh, neutron flow he actually says that and you're like that's the catchphrase from the third doctor <laughs> excellent <laughs> which you will get to check out eventually i will get there i will get to the classic who yes well once the shock troops are <laughs> shocked uh... <laughs> we're left only with odin who is still ready to take heads and kick butts but they bust open the door, and in comes a dragon, a, a virtual Midgard serpent. Yes. Which Odin is cowering in front of because they have stolen one of the shock troopers' helmet and plugged a shielder 
into it, who is now projecting an illusion through their comm systems of her <laughs> puppet that is yeah. literally just like the front end of a Viking ship to look a little bit like a dragon. <laughs> right. Like a three year old put some Legos together and it's it's a dragon. Like, it's a okay, dragon. It's You're a like, dragon. Okay, sure. that's but to, it's a dragon. But to Odin's eyes, it is the full blown serpent coming to chomp on him <laughs> until everybody's laughing at him and they realize he realizes that it's just a puppet. Yeah. It's just the puppet, and the doctor's laughing at him, going, Okay, so we've just recorded all of this, and your your company pretty much relies on its reputation. Without your reputation, you get nothing. So how would people feel if they see this? I'm gonna, then... I'm gonna press I'm gonna press it. I'm gonna I'm gonna upload it. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I, how, oh, it's uploaded. Right. Like big bad Viking badass cowering before a wooden plank, basically. Yeah. So they literally blackmail them with shame into pissing off <laughs> <laughs> and not coming back because we will upload this. Yeah. And how would you feel about that? Someone's in the background, background screaming world star. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're like, oh, come on. <laughs> really? That reference? <laughs> Unfortunately, as often comes in the Hoovian universe, there is always a price to be paid for yep. every victory. And they find out that a shielder is effectively dying from using this alien technology that was not designed for her to project this image. So while she has saved her village, she yeah. is she's going to die. Yeah, she is right there. And the doctor makes the decision because he says, I quote, I am sick of losing people. Yeah, that whole scene of him back at the boat, uh, boathouse, the fish house, where the eels are. That entire scene is pretty heart wrenching. Right. But he also within it comes to the revelation of I know why I picked this face now. I understand it. And it flashes to the 10th doctor. Yes. Saving. I, I know the, that the episode is the fires of Pompeii, right? Um, I don't remember the the character's the, name, the exact circumstances of it, but it's you know the doctor outside of the TARDIS reaching like, his hand out, come on, saving people, and it, he chose that face to remind him that he is the doctor and this is what he does. He saves people, so yeah. He takes apart one of the other helmets and uses one of the mirror's healing circuits Yep, on a shielder. Yeah. Which, it takes immediate effect and starts healing the damage that has been done and he realizes that he may have just made a blunder. Yeah, it turns out that it won't stop. Ever. It will continue to heal her and keep her at this for the rest of her life. Right. It's, Which means that there is no rest of her life. That is the rest of eternity. Right. And in, in, the, in the same body, in the same form, never getting, never... Never growing, aging. Never aging. It, it, it's the interview with a vampire Clara situation, or Claudia situation, yes. where this is why we don't turn children. Where she's permanently stuck at about the age of 13. Right. Because it tends to drive them a little... Betty. A little crazy. A little crazy. But the doctor also gives a shielder another circuit. So she can choose someone to be with her. So that she can choose a companion at some point because he's not yeah, you know, he's not heartless no matter how no. many times he comes across as being heartless sometimes. It's just he's not looking to inflict any more pain and wants to give her that choice. Yes. And that's pretty much where we leave the episode with oh, even better him realizing that he may have just created the prophesized hybrid. Yeah. Uh, there's also another another Easter egg to a, a classic doctor. Uh, the line of time will tell it always does is actually the final line uh, from the seventh doctor. Oh, his, his parting remarks. Yep. Nice. 
Yeah, it was. It's kind of cool how many like just Easter eggs there were in here. I'm like, come on, more? Okay, I'll take them. <laughs> Keep them going. <laughs> See, and but but there again, that's something for like, throwing it out to the hardcore Hoovians. Yeah, where. You're like, here you go. Nuvians, like me. Yeah, we're trademarking that. Um, Nuvians. <laughs> what's like, a Nuvian? What's a Nuvian? <laughs> Bitch, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so, you just messed up my flow, man. Yes. I'm it's, sorry. It's, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's, it's something for... The old school fans will pick up immediately on or will get as an Easter egg, whereas us new followers will not catch it. But it's just like, oh, that that's a cool line. Like, yeah, he's said it before. Oh, Ooh. Okay. what episode was that? It's like, yeah. well, it's actually a story. It's a four part series. But, you know, we'll get to so that. we we can backtrack and we'll go over that. And that leads us directly into the second part of this two-parter, The Woman Who Lived. Yes. Which doesn't just slap you in the face like, we're going to see a shielder again. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I, I loved how right away it was like, oh, this is definitely a two-parter, and we're, this, a shielder is the main character. Like, you can see just through the title. Right, the focus is going to be on her. You almost expect it to be almost a Dr. Light episode. Right. Which is immediately dissipated with the first scene. We're, we're taken to 1651 France for a carriage robbery. Yes. It's it, incredibly polite. It's, it's a very polite, yes. It, I've never seen three people discuss being robbed and not get shot by one single person nope. on a horse ever <laughs> um so it, it, this very polite discourse and i'm going to rob you i'm a known i'm the nightmare yes you will surrender to me just just give me your money and, and we'll be on along our way right and, well you're awful cocky for somebody alone who says i'm alone and glowing eyeballs come out of the bush yeah like, it's like oh oh and at the same time, the doctor comes in the other side of the carriage going, Oh, hi, yes, no, I'm just looking for something. Excuse me, please don't mind me. Like, what, and the, just, like, the, walks the, through. You're, you're Totally interrupt. interrupts. This, this is my robbery. <laughs> this is my robbery. Well, yeah, no, carry on. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm here for something else. I'm, I'm sorry, I totally wasn't listening to you just looking at whatever contraption he has in his hand. I'm, I'm not listening, and I, I promise I will this time, and... This is my robbery. You need to get out of here. You know, I'm so sorry. I just, I wasn't listening again. Oh, oh, it's back here. It goes to the back of the carriage and <laughs> keeps bickering with, with the armed assailant while the victims are just looking around trying Wait, to what, figure out what's what do we do? going on. What do we do? And, who is robbing who? <laughs> yeah, this is my robbery. You can't have it. Well, th we can share robberies. Isn't that what robbery is all about? Yeah. <laughs> I just and, need this one thing. <laughs> at which point... The carriage driver's like, I'm out of here. And just the takes carriage off. takes off, leaving the armed highwayman and the doctor bickering with each other. You ruined my robbery. Well, I needed that, too. I only needed the one thing. What do you need all this for? <laughs> and it ends up the highwayman is a shielder. No, it's me. But we don't know that yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, doesn't she say her name is me during this? No, she first... Ch she immediately oh, chastises yeah. him asking him what took you so long old man yes yes and sorry the, <laughs> <laughs> oops and, <laughs> it, it, you know the doctor is looking for an alien artifact she was just looking for something sparkly or that's what she tells the doctor to begin with because oh, I'm just taking things because they're rare and I'm bored and why not I know as I've now been living Almost two thousand years. Yeah, at this I've been point. living a long, long time already. To the point where I don't even remember. She tells him to stop calling her a shielder. She's just me because all the other names don't matter. She doesn't remember them at all. Yeah, and she's got an extensive oh, it's journal a and beautiful library of all of her memories that she goes through and reads because she doesn't know. She yeah. doesn't remember, and that's partially her 
hell and damnation of being immortal, but not having the memory of a time lord that can that can store all that of can it. Store all of that. The human brain still only it's a limited hard drive. You don't yeah. you have so much, and then you have to get rid of things. Things get deleted. Right. So she she keeps yelling at him. I'm just me. Stop calling me a shielder. I don't remember those people. I have no connection to them. I barely remember who you are. Which may or may not be a lie, because she definitely recognized him right away on while he was interrupting her robbery. Yes. And I'm like, eh, no, you, you, I think you know who he is. Yes. He, I, I really... I. Looking at it, I mean, you, you go through the whole thing, you know, you know, when they find as they're catching up, like finally, like truly catching up with one another. She was a queen during the, uh, you know, she had action during the Hundred Year War, uh, the Black Death. Uh, she she had children and was yeah. married. And now it's the, her children died during the Black Death. So she'll ne she never wants to have children again. Right. And there were some pages that were ripped out yes. of the journal that the doctor obviously was kind of curious about, but seeing as it was right on the heels of her children dying, it maybe had something that she did not want to remember. Yeah, definitely. Or it could be something she was just hiding. Oh, Again, I'm going but, more with the didn't want to remember. Didn't want to remember, yeah, yeah because it was just so heart-wrenching and soul-rending. Um, she, but she's effectively suffering from the immortals' malaise and doldrum. She's bored with life. She wants to go with the doctor, and yeah. she sees him as showing up as this is her chance to get the hell out of Dodge. There is some adventure to go on. Right, and she is perfectly aware of what is potentially possible. Right. And it's one of the things she says to him. He's like, oh, there's a great big world. She's like, it takes a day to get to Kent from here. Oh, in the future, you can fly. I want to fly now. Yeah. And a little bit of a rook assault comes out. Like, I want it now, Daddy. And I'm <laughs> impatient. But from her point of view, she's been waiting 2,000 years for this. <laughs> she's <laughs> she's a little miffed at being left on the curb for this long. She's like, come on! Seriously! <laughs> and and we also come to find out that she she has a kitty. Yes, she does. She is she has become a crazy cat lady in her old age. <laughs> <laughs> the cat happens to be an alien um the Leonians which is why I, they I'm, look like a lion. I was like, "Ah, oh, it's a weak writing right there, but we'll roll with it." Just and, uh okay. And and the kitty breathes fire. Now we're reaching into Greek mythology and putting a little chimera in there, but all right, hey, all go, right, roll with it. Sure, we're still rolling with we're, it. We're fine. It's Doctor Who. Just accept it. It's the Doctor. Just accept it. But <laughs> the the Leonian and Lady Me now are looking for the same jewel that the Doctor is looking for. Yes, but for their own nefarious reasons, it's called the Eye of Hades, which um. Okay, if there's a cursed object, it's that's a name for it right there. <laughs> you know something bad is going to happen. No good comes You're like, from this, anything. This isn't good. Yeah, it's like, you know, it's the devil's chalice. Yeah, I'm going to have another glass, please. It's just... <laughs> anything some else. Things, it's just obviously a shit idea to deal with it. Because like, it's just so obviously a shit idea to deal with it. Can we use the one called Bob's Water Cup? Because... Because that's safe, right? <laughs> Can I have World's Greatest Time Traveler over there? That <laughs> that, that would be great. Yeah. But the, the purpose of the gem, we find out, is to ostensibly open a portal. Yes. Because me is so desperate to get off of Earth. To go do something else. Anything else. The weird she part is, she's only really moved from, like, Scandinavia to Europe. I don't know how she is this bored. There's a lot of world for her to is explore, but okay, whatever. It, right, but there again, she she is perfectly aware. She has encountered robotic automatons and aliens. True. And is a yep. technologically enhanced immortal. Ah. She has way too much knowledge and has now had to slug through the mud, basically. True, true. And just wait. And wait. I know. And wait. And wait. And wait. No, it can't, can't, can't be very easy. Um, <clears throat> but she, she wants, she's 
wants to get out of there so badly she's decided that she doesn't care. She has absolutely no compunctions about killing. Because, why? They're, they're mayflies. It doesn't matter. Their lives don't matter. And to the point where the doctor actually has to tell her, if you kill that person, you will make an enemy of me. Yes. Let them go. It's, you don't have to do this. And they have this argument several times while trying to steal this gem. And there, there is a great little sneaking through the living room scene where they're crawling behind a couch while the dude snoring on the couch gets <laughs> up and walks out. And then they have to shimmy up the, the chimney having an argument about <laughs> whose fault this all is. And yes. Great little like heist scene there. It's a wonderful moment of banter. Uh, yes. <laughs> Which he then chastised people for later on. Yes. Um, as as they're trying, as they're leaving, they get jumped by uh, Sam Swift and a few of his friends, who is a competing highway robber, r- rogue of the area, right? Who wants to have it out with the nightmare, and he, he's a very jovial tongue-in-cheek rogue yeah making sure that everybody just knows how witty he actually is and how funny he is and the doctor just immediately starts shutting him down like no puns we're not having any puns stop that nope (laughs) i do not accept it and then lady me and sam have another little exchange and the doctor again is stop it i I, this is now banter i'm decidedly against banter (laughs) Which is really ironic, considering that's, again, kind of his superpower, is bantering to get... Even just to himself. Just to himself. It's like, this is kind of what you do, guy. It's what you do, do. guy. Is it just let somebody else banter for a minute. <laughs> it's okay. Yes, they can have the spotlight, too. Yeah. And, and I, I believe it was Sam who uh, the doctor actually tells, tells her, if you kill him, you will make an enemy of me. Yes. And so he is let go, and uh, they, the doctor comes to find out the, the existence of the Leonian and that this gem is going to open a portal, but a death is required. Right. And again, me has become so detached, so desensitized. She's just going to kill her manservant. Yeah. Who, who she's basically kept around just until she gets this gem. She even tells the doctor, he's really not a very good butler, but, you know, who else would take him in, this and that? And it's like, oh, well, that's awfully kind of hurt. No. No, no, it's purely to be sacrificed. just a farm animal waiting for Thanksgiving. That's just it. Yeah. The doctor, of course, takes great issue with all of this. But timing be, being what it is, guards show up, and Lady Me it's, says, "You know, this guy is was trying to rob my place. This is the doctor. Here's the poster, because now posters have been yeah. made arrest warrants for the doctor as the the nightmare sidekick. But Sam Swift has been captured, and we're gonna hang him at noon. Oh, noon, huh? I can make it there. Yeah." So she takes her kitty and travels off to witness Sam's death to open the portal, and the doctor has to escape from the, the feckless guards, who, of of course, end up letting him go. Well, yeah, I mean, the bounty on him was 20 pounds, so he gave them 30 pounds. Right. He's he- just like... All right, there you go. I know Done. Where, I know where she, Lady Me keeps all of her gold. Well, why didn't you start by saying that? So he <laughs> totally bribes the guards like, with somebody hey, else's stuff. There you go. Just yeah. go nuts with it. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> let, let me out of here. Right. <laughs> the, the doctor arrives to the hanging where Sam Swift is doing his absolute best to keep the audience laughing because he knows and even says, if you're laughing, I'm not hanging. So <laughs> he commences to make all kinds of body jokes and then sees the doctor in the crowd and uses him to start riffing back and forth. And the doctor plays along because he realizes He's the like, same oh, thing. this is keeping you alive and keeping the amulet from being used. Being used until Lady Me has about enough of all that. Yeah. 
And as they're going, he, uh, as they're about to let Sam go, she says, yeah, no, and slams the jewel into his chest, which immediately starts draining his life force and op- opens a portal Yeah, where things start coming through immediately, and the the Leonian is very happy about this and reveals, haha, no, it's an invasion, we will conquer this planet and kitties will rule. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think is the overall plan for cats everywhere. I mean, it, it, there, there's a moment where I saw, I saw that plan happen and I was like, you know, finger up, and I'm like, but wait, we get kitties. Yeah. I, I mean, alright. I think, I think more <laughs> to the point, kitties get us, but... They already do. They already do. Yeah, um... Shielder realizes that she's been tricked and that he had absolutely no intentions of taking her away from anywhere. He just right. wanted to use her to get the gem to open the portal. Yep. Um, and the only way to reverse the flow of of the life force draining energy is to use the other Meyer circuit on, on Sam. Sam. Yeah. Which brought up the potential question of okay or is he going to be an immortal but it's after the the gem pretty much short circuits the circuit and draws more power than it's able to do so yeah. it saved sam but it did not create an immortal no it, it the two forces negated each other and everything's fine i think but i do like the conversation that you know the doctor and me have after this you know, when they're talking about being immortal and how, you know, what's in, what's actually important, you know, and there's the hint of Captain Jack Harkness in the conversation as well. Right, right. They, they bring that up and saying that he's known several immortals that have made it work. And it's because the humans lives are so short. They are mayflies. That's why what makes every moment precious. Right. Because they can't go back, they can't just. There's move no along waiting. Reconstruct. Yeah. Every and, moment is precious because of it. Right. And me asks the doctor once again to let her come with him, and he says no because he, in the back of his head he knows she's the prophesized hybrid yeah. or thinks she is, and is concerned that her coming with him will accelerate the process or will cause problems that will directly lead to whatever bad thing is going to happen. Yes. And and they have the little back and forth where she's clearly still very irritated at being left on the curbside. Right. And during the exchange, um, the doctor says to her, you know, "I, I think I'm very glad I saved you. And she responds with a smirk of, oh, I, I think everyone will be. And it's very <laughs> like, oh, oh, whoa, whoa. That was kind of dark and ominous right yes. there. And then tells him, oh, don't worry. I will watch over the people you are watching over. Well, yeah, the, it, sorta, you know, it or, comes down to that, you know, his entire life, his entire mission is to protect the Earth. And her response was yes you're here to protect the earth i'm here to protect the people from you so keep your shit together (laughs) and i won't have to do anything i'm watching you i will be there pay attention (laughs) i'm immortal there's nothing you can do about me so we'll keep this going (laughs) because you won't kill me yeah we've established that and i can't die (laughs) and and i won't die of natural causes so unless i screw up i'll i'm always there you know she's effectively giving him the the fingers to the eyes i'm watching (laughs) watching watching you you. (laughs) and the doctor leaves and meets up with clara and immediately they're talking about one of her students and he's getting you know oh, what'd you do today oh nothing nothing much not yeah no, no big deal blah 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 we just kept myself oh, and, busy with something oh and here and look at a picture this is this is a picture of me and the student isn't she awesome and the doctor takes the phone and in the background of the picture looking through a fence is hold, la- is, hold on is, give it a my eyes she knows me, just watching she's like i know i know you're looking at this photo right now I know you're looking at this because I can see you. <laughs> right? Just keep, keep keep it together there, Doc, because uh, 
I'm still here. I'm not going away. Which, again, it's sort of ominous. You're, at this point, we're not real sure. Is she friend or foe? Right. Is she completely ambivalent? Is yeah. she just messing with him because she's bored and he won't give her a ride? <laughs> Pretty much. Well, I mean, in some ways, like, yes. Like, I have nothing better to do with Eternity, so I'm just going to be in your background always. I'll, I'll be there. I'll catch up to you. Yeah. Uh, I do like the fact that Clara doesn't even show up for the episode until the very end. Until the very end, right. Because it was, again, things the Doctor is doing aside that he does not necessarily share with his companions. Exactly. Does He's not... like, I, I don't need you on this one. You can sit the bench. Yeah. In fact, you don't even need to know that you're sitting the bench. <laughs> there's a timeout. You think that there's a timeout. I've got an- another entire game going on over here. Right. And then I came back. And this information will only cause you a little more stress because you don't need to know about it right, right now. There's nothing any of us can do. There's no reason for you to be aware of yet another shadowy figure exactly hanging out in the background that you have to worry yourself about. We have enough trouble with Missy running around <laughs> she's, somewhere. She's still someplace. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <just laughs> one problem at a time. Just keep it at that. Yes. All right, so that's where we're going to end it off, end off this episode. But uh, next week, we're going to be jumping into the Zygon Invasion and the Zygon Inversion. Which, Zygons again. Uh, Woo! Suckers! I was going to say, there's a chance that this, these episodes may suck. Oh! Uh, <laughs> but we'll get to see if the Doctor kisses another one of them. Uh, or not. Okay. I don't <laughs> remember. I, I actually don't remember. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for checking out the episode. Go ahead and hit the like button, the notification button, subscribe to the channel. Um, You know what? Even share. Yeah, share this with somebody. Let us know what your favorite episodes were. Let me know what you think I should watch since it's pretty much open-ended. Yes. Give us some drops and we uh, we may get to it on a classic Who damn right anyway ladies and gentlemen have fun see ya